Um, folks, we do have uh, cold water here if anybody wants to uh, grab some water. Um, we do have a pizza coming in just a little bit. Our next program is is probably one of my favorite because uh, I'm, I'm, I consider myself a, a marketing guy. Uh, marketing is my thing. It's something that I like to do. I really enjoy it. I think it's one of my strengths. And uh, I put together a team of guys that are friends of mine and they have a lot of knowledge in that background. Um, they're gonna talk about marketing your website. They're gonna talk about why video is important for your website because in today's technology, in today's day, we are up to speed with video. If you remember seven, less than five years ago actually, downloading a video could lock up your phone and uh, you know, we, not everybody was uh, at the speeds that we are today to download video. Um, we've come a long way with uh, websites. Uh, I know my website 10 years ago was, uh, you could barely download pictures and uh, the graphics weren't all that great. And uh, as time goes on, you know, uh, we, we get better and better. And um, I'm gonna talk about each one individually before they come, come up here. Mike Michaels from Mola Stage One. Um, everybody knows him as Fish. Um, very char charismatic guy, very passionate about marketing, very passionate about the mobile stage industry. Like he said at breakfast, he doesn't own any mobile stages. He's more like a broker, but the guy owns the phones. He gets tons of gigs, so if you didn't need to him to speak to him, make sure that you give him a business card because chances are he can give you a call and definitely fill up your calendar, uh, possibly when you're not, when, when your uh, stage is not booked. And then we have Alexander Mazai. He's an expert in video production. He's, he's incredible at turning around video. Any of the footage that you saw that was playing uh, last night and earlier today on the uh, on the Glenn, uh, Glenn's uh, video screen here from Fresh Air Flicks, um, he produced that last night. And he puts things together really incredibly. He has a great eye for the camera. Oh, absolutely. You'll be able to see it and show and share it. Alex is going to actually talk about that uh, as part of his presentation. And also, during lunch, Alex wants to get some uh, testimonials. So if you, uh, if we may walk up to you and say, hey, do you mind saying a few words on the side in front of one of the stages? Uh, we would love to get your reaction on how you feel about the Mobile Stage Conference and help us promote it for 2020. I'm not sure if anybody knows, but um, in 2020 is gonna be the next time we're here at the Bahia Mar. It's gonna be right after the Super Bowl that's gonna be held um, at Hard Rock Stadium where the Dolphins play. If anybody ever been to Hard Rock Stadium, um, it's totally worth a trip to go check it out. They recently put a roof over the stadium that covers the spectators. Um, it's open air over the field, and uh, they spent about a billion dollars redoing the stadium. The thing looks like a spaceship when you when you drive by it. There's a ton of memorabilia from the Hard Rock in there, and it's going to be an awesome site for uh, the Super Bowl when it's held in 2020. And uh, that's part of our marketing campaign to attract um, some of the bigger players that are in the industry that can help us with some uh, really cool seminars that I have planned for that uh, activation uh, for the Mobile Stage Conference in 2020. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite Michael Michaels, Big Fish, to come on out here, and uh, Alexander Mazai. These guys are real high energy guys, so they're gonna keep you really entertained, and uh, any questions that you have um, towards the end, and even after, they'll be happy to answer. Good afternoon. Where's the bacon? It won't get out of the video. My name is Mike. Michaels. Everybody uh, calls me Fish. Uh, this is my friend and partner, Mr. Alexander. How you guys doing out there? I'm a little deaf in this ear, so if you guys aren't loud, I can't hear you. How you guys doing out there? sell fun. We do. We sell fun. We, sometimes it may not be fun for us, but at the end of the day, the spectators is what makes our industry pretty cool. And every week you go out on a gig or every day, you'll meet a new challenge and new things and it's kind of entertaining. I, I'm fortunate enough to have been able to work in my years of marketing. We're always grinding, trying to find why the phones ring. My whole concept was I don't know anything but all the leads. I rank uh, on the first page nationwide. In smaller towns and communities, I have the number one position. 
uh, California, Florida, uh, where I have a lot of friends. I try not to push too much because then they, you know, why are you on top of me? I, I, I. Uh, a website is like a child. Every day you have to feed it information. If you can't do it every day, once a week feed it information. And as you keep feeding it, it'll grow. It'll grow. I haven't spent more than 70 bucks a month. I started a campaign in uh, October of 2013, and I stopped my campaign in uh, January 1st, 2014. So just in three and a half months, I went to the number one position across America. I spent $7,000 to do that, and a lot of grinding. The most important way to, for me to explain the internet is, it's an electronic file cabinet. It's a folder. Your stage is one folder. Your other stage is another folder. Your audio is another folder. The services you provide another folder. The fatter that folder is, the higher you rank as an authority. What's an authority? The one with the most information. The one with the most relevant information and the one with the newest information is there at the top of the rank. We have put together like a little video. Alex will run through it. I'm going to step to the side. Now, real quick, one of the things that we learned early was if you can't handle being on the first page of Google, you don't belong there. I'll explain that in a second. So this is just a, a little guy we got here. You go into Google, you search in a keyword, and then all of a sudden you're on the first page. And now you're getting phone calls, but you can't get back to those phone calls because you're busy trying to do quotes for everybody else. So you, your, your business gets affected if you don't have the, the thought process worked out. What we focus on is getting you the search engine optimization for each page, the digital marketing, the website maintenance, and the video and the audio production that you can use as sales tools to get people to come to your website and everything else. Now one of the things that I learned early was there's a timeline from when the person's looking for you and when they're gonna buy. And if you can draw a line and then start looking at these different little increments, where is that person looking for you and when are they gonna get to the question how much? If they're coming in in the beginning, they don't know anything about mobile stages, they're gonna be like, I don't know anything. So you have to set up a mouse trap just for them. Then you got a guy who wants to know the difference between a century stage and a stage mobile and all these other guys. I got, a, I got a, a website page dedicated just for that. So just because you have a website, the website's actually the smallest part of your digital reputation. If you own a website, you're gonna to wanna to put the best stuff about yourself. But what is a person going to do when they want to hire somebody and the job's going to be quoted at fifty, sixty thousand dollars? They're going to do some research and they're going to see what other people are talking about. They're going to see what your social presence looks like. They're going to look at all these other aspects before they make a decision to say, "Okay, I'm, I like this guy." Probably the quote's the first thing. So if you don't have that in your your thought process, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. So this is um, this is Doug. He's an entrepreneur, but he's unhappy for many reasons. Nobody can find him. He doesn't exist online. He, you use keywords like mobile stage and New York. He, he doesn't even show up because he doesn't understand marketing until he found us. So what we're going to be able to do for Doug is... Come on, Doug. <laughs> we're going to help him become visible, build his digital reputation, and establish an authority in the marketplace. So you're probably asking, how do we do that? One of the things that I, I want you to think about is how many people you have building your content. So we, we broke it down into little containers. You got the content rhino. And the content rhino, he's the guy that has the camera. He's the guy that has the microphone. He's the guy that has all the animations and all the things. And they're creating the things, the brand. They're getting out there the information and in a visual, in an audio, whatever, a video. Then you got the people who code it. Who, Make it work for the robots, not for the humans, because they're two different things. Let me elaborate on that a second. When you see an image on a computer or your phone, you're seeing colors, whatever the image may be. Image of Doug hanging out on the screen. The computer sees zeros and ones. It's called binary code. Binary code is the code that one computer to another computer can, can create an image for you. What we do on the back of the image that humans will never see is implement metadata. Metadata, I take a photo of this event, I take a picture of all the other stuff around me, and I say, okay, this is located at the Bahia Mar. 
It's located in Fort Lauderdale. It's located right near the marina. All these other words that are going behind that image are giving the robot possibilities of where that image belongs and what container to be put in. So if we put mobile stage and audio and light production and every zip code you want to target, when somebody uses keywords, mobile stage, and it's coming out of Fort Lauderdale near the Bahia Mar, that image is going to come up. Now you say, why are images important? Images are real estate. The internet today is just like real estate. This land, 100 years ago, you could have bought four or five pieces of corn. Today, it's probably billions of dollars. The internet's going to be the same way. There's only so much room on the internet. On the first page, there's only 10 listings. Now, it's only eight because Google sold out and made four ads on the top and three ads on the bottom, which means these people are paying more and more for that ad space. So if you take an image and load it up to Facebook or put it on your website, you just wasted your time and money. You did nothing, absolutely nothing. You send that image and, and let, let us put 100 to 200 pages of data on, 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 on Word, 200 pages of data behind one image. I tell Google where the image belongs. It belongs on the rent mobile stage, it belongs on the mobile stages, it belongs on the portable stage, outdoor stage, festival stage. So there's a lot of things that, that people see, but they don't see behind the scenes. If we get a chance after, we'll pull up and show you some data that goes behind an image. I got a little example here. How many people have heard Brad Pitt? Can I ask a quick question on that one? Yes. Okay, so uh, I snap a picture with my iPhone. I go into, um, should I use photos or iPhone? That's the one. And then I have a page of their Word document with lots of hundred, with hundred words on it. Is there a match? I can just, I can just copy and paste that into the little square, right? Yes. Now watch this. If you tell Google this is a picture of a microphone. It's going to go into a microphone container. If I tell Google this would this is a microphone for the Mobile Stage Conference at the Bahia Mar in Fort Lauderdale, right across the street from the Fort Lauderdale Beach, behind the marina, the marina, the Bahia Mar, Fort Lauderdale, the name of the city, have a lot more value and right. credibility than my microphone does. Right, right. And then if I implement every zip code around the area, when they punch the word microphone in from one of these areas. That's going to be okay, so is that in the metadata box? Or right. If you own an Apple computer and open up in your in your Photoshop. It's in Photoshop under file. Or file, or file info dot dot dot. Right, but do, am I writing that in the sentence or am I putting that in my metadata box? Well, you know, a metadata box that has your name, the creator, the phone number, the address, everything. Okay. And then you have a keyword listing and then a description. It has a little box for each thing. Who took the picture? Who was the artist? Right, right, right. Who was this picture for? What is the purpose of the picture? So by implementing all this data onto an image, you're occupying one image space, but you're also occupying 100 to 200 pages of data relevant to your name. So is that uh, most easy? You could do it in Lightroom, you could do it in Photoshop, there's other third party apps that do it. But, but photos on my iPhone will do it, it won't yeah. create it. Yeah, it does. It does, but it takes time. I I use the thing is batching it, so yeah, you might okay. put a hundred images in and you just push a button and it goes and, and it spits it out. Okay. Most people won't do it. That's why we offer the service. How about most photographers are lazy and they won't do it? <laughs> How many freaking You're photographers will go to a festival and are like, yo, you know about yeah. metadata? Like, what is that? You know, we hire photographers, about 10 or 15 photographers with high-end cameras, just for their their, 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 their ID. Every, every camera props. has a EIN number, a serial number, you have an IP address where you upload it to. When you backwards engineer the whole system and you look at it, if you get 100,000 people in a festival taking a picture of the stage and then they hashtag it with mobile stage conference, what happens to the algorithm? It goes, oh my god, there's something happening, we gotta, we gotta go, what's this, what's this, it's important, put it at the top. That's called link juice. Link juice is the currency of the internet. Uh, in America, we use money. So if you put up 1,000 images, 1,000, with 100 pages of data behind each image, who's the mathematician here? Where's the weather guy? Who, where's the weather guy? <laughs> who's the mathematician here? 1,000 times what? 1,000 images times 100. That's 100. 
It's a lot. A hundred thousand. <laughs> it's way more than that. But we'll, a thousand thousands is a, is a is a million. So it's a hundred million pages of content for a thousand images. If you find me another company other than like a mega bank or you know like Facebook and these big places that have billions of images, there's not too many staging companies that will have that much content on the internet. I was was creative that I, I put the content on the internet and I made it so nobody can find it, meaning humans, because then they'll copy it. So I have thousands and thousands and millions of documents all over the internet that sometimes say, hey, we're, we made a new stage, we're putting a solar panel on the top and we're going to be using solar panels so we become green environmentally friendly. And I hired a company to put out a press release. It went to 50,000 different places. 57,000. People say, you know, well, how much money do you spend a month? I spend under 100 bucks a month now. Without a footprint, you, everything else is irrelevant. And people say, what do you mean? My expense, sometimes $3,000 a month. I rank higher than him. He says, how do you do it? I don't know. Just keep putting data into the, into the, into the machine. And that data, all it does is give you credibility. Yeah, I have a slide here that shows you. How many of you guys heard of Brad Pitt? Who? Brad Pitt. All right, if you do a Google search for Brad Pitt on Google and you use images, how many images are going to show up? How many? Let's say 100,000. How many of them are going to be him? How about like all of them? All of them. Okay? Now, the internet doesn't understand how to think. It doesn't know, oh, well, I know that this is Brad Pitt because it's Brad Pitt. No, it knows because. Somebody put the time to put the information in or it's associated to an article and it's boom, right there. Now if I if I search for, how do you pronounce your name? Laramie. Laramie. Laramie M. Right? If I put that in the keyword, how many images show up? 100,000 images. How many of them are you? Three. So you know what? You don't exist. You know why? Because the brain looks at all the images and says, oh, there's too much variation. There's too many different things. Do you own 100,000 images of yourself? No. Then how is Google gonna come back and say, oh, I know where he lives, he's taking a, uh, never mind. <laughs> you have to understand, if you don't own the content, the internet can't bring it back in a search. Okay, so what we did was we took the time, I have a little screen here, it shows the, the robots are gonna go in and he's gonna find the, the search word that they put into that little box. And he's gonna look for whatever the keyword is that you put in there. And he's looking and searching all the data and he's doing this in under a millisecond. And then he's gonna give you back your results. How many times have you guys, did anybody ever place a Google ad on Google? How, how are the results? All right, SEO is better. Anybody else have put ads on Google? Mike, how, how do you find the results? From six years ago to now? Um, it's a lot more expensive where we used to pay like 10 cents a click and now in some instances we pay like almost $3 a click. $3 a click. Wow. You know who most of those clicks are? Your competitors. It's the truth, your competitors. Oh, let me, bing, 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 bing. Now Google found a way, you know what I mean, to just click you down on their own. They don't need competitors. Yeah. So if you're gonna do a, an ad, you're gonna do an exact search term ad. Does anybody know what that means? Well, okay. Looking to rent microphone with fat guy holding it. <laughs> or rent microphone. How many times do you think looking for fat guy holding microphone are gonna come up? But if they do, it's gonna be a real lead. Whereas rent microphone, you're gonna get everything from the 12 year old hip hop artist that needs a, a microphone for a backyard barbecue and a stage, a four by four stage, 16 inches high, and you're not gonna get the credible leads. You need to, if you're gonna advertise, you need an exact search term. Now, if you use that with Google, advertising with Google, using an exact search term, the probability of you getting a lot of calls is very, very small, but, because you're advertising with Google, you're automatically getting a lift of link juice because you're you're an ally with them now. You're working, you're giving them money because even though you're not spending it, but when they you do get a call from an exact search term lead, it's a real person that has a real thing. Does anybody have a, a quick quote for them? 
or a form on their website. Uh, anybody else? There's only two people? Three? Four? Five? Six? Seven? Eight? Everybody should have a form. Because what happens, if somebody's on your website, you only have about 30 seconds to catch them and captivate them. So either it's going to be a little video, a couple of pictures, and if they see a form, big companies use forms. Why? Because they're accustomed to it. You go to the motor vehicles, you fill out a form. You want to get on a plane, you fill out a form. You wanted to come to this event, you filled out a form. People are programmed to fill out forms. If you have a, a form, the people will take the time to do it. Now you're going to get an email. They tell you, I want a SL100. I need it for two days, one day for the loading. I need audio. I need lights. I need to have only side of house because there's no room front of house. And I need a generator. They tell you everything they need. Now when you call them up, you've got all the homework in front of you. So you have to put forms on your websites. If you have a problem, come and see us. We'll hook you up. What's the next thing? So basically the, the last thing that we have is in this area was for Google, they have a tool called the keyword search. And what you do is you put in like mobile stage and then it's going to show you how many people search for mobile stage. And then it's going to give you a list of all the other words that are associated to that search and how many searches those go in. So that's how we go and find the words that we're going to put into the, the pictures and videos and using those in blogs. You're, you're using the words that are being searched the most. You're not paying it as an advertiser. You're getting it naturally and organically. Does everybody have a phone here with them? Right now, I'd like to take a minute out. Take out your phones, and I want you to search Rent Mobile Stage California. You feel like doing that to yourself off. I'm going to do one better after this one. You're going to laugh. I want to know the first organic listing, not advertisers. You know what the advertisers are? They're the people that like throwing money away. We, we believe in organic, organic rankings. Rent Mobile Stage California. What, I come up first? Mobile Stage One, come up first, right? Where are we sitting right now? I'm sitting in Fort Lauderdale. Where do I live? I live in New York. People say, how do you get all these jobs? You know how nice it is to be ranked number one in California? I get, last week, Skinny, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, Skinny did a job. You know when he did the job? Malibu. Beautiful weather. He said it was the greatest gig. It was a commercial. I don't know who the commercial was for. I thought they told me Macy's. Who was it for? What's that? Mountain Productions came up number one. Mountain Productions? That's an ad. Organic, organic, natural. We can do. That's okay. I know where I'm at. Fish, we're number five. Number five. <laughs> can you explain how Google makes money? Because yes. A lot of people might not know. Okay. Do you guys know how Google makes money? From you putting ads in there. Yeah, Google's free for everybody. All right, you ready? Here's how it works. I'm gonna do the yellow gonna, pages. Start with the yellow pages. Yellow pages. I rank number one. Manta, I rank number one. Yelp, I rank number one. Manta, I rank number one. Merchant, I rank number one. You know why? Those are all local listings. You know how Google makes money? By ads. So you want to be in the number one position on mobile stage rental, and you want to be in the number one position. He was paying 10 cents, and he says, no, nah, I, I don't want to be number one. Now he's paying 20, you're like, screw that, 30. Oh no, Mike's in the game, he's a big guy, he's got lots of money, a dollar. That's how they make money. I have a system, I've been telling you for the last four years, works, I haven't spent a dime, and you can go to the Google rankings and see that I didn't spend any ad dollars, and they rank organically number one. You know the best part is? I don't own a stage. I own 250 of them. They're all over the country, and I pick up the phone. Are you working this week? You know, your stage available? Yes, okay, let's see if we can get the job. Why? That's what, uh, Google hates me. They call me up and curse me. They call me up and they're like, well, what's going on? I don't understand. Yelp, you got 52,000 visits in the last six months, but nobody filled out anything. I said, I don't want them to fill out nothing. Don't worry, I'm getting busy, that's good. I found a way to create traffic. Traffic is visitors coming in and just sniffing around and looking. If you put a form on your page, you're gonna pick up, I would say another 30% more quality leads. 
I used to put the stupid ads out and I found which ones work, which ones don't, which ones create money. Typically for any mobile stage company, you should be between $150 and $500 a month on some just basic ads. You know what, those basic ads, ROI, return on investment. We spent $500, 15 calls, and we closed four of them. We made this much money. We made $2,000, 20% right for advertising. Now you got a $400 budget built in for the next one. You sold two ads, you made $800. And that's how you have to look at it. Every company has a certain budget delegated for advertising. If you don't advertise what you have, you're not gonna win. I don't I don't do any ads, anything in Colorado. Why? My friend Skinny's there. I don't do anything in New York. Mike's there. So I try to pick areas where I don't have people. If I have somebody, I'll call them up and say, listen, Tom, did you, did you get this lead? Nope. All right, let's see if we can book it. I'll call you and ask if you got the lead. And if you didn't, let's try to book it. And why did I get the lead? Because I, I spent the time. Get me photos. The first thing you need to do is gather photos. And I want photos that you never put on, 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 on Facebook or Instagram. Because you know what happens when you put your photo on Instagram? Nothing, you wasted it. And then Facebook owns it. It became their property. You gave them permission to make it their property. But if you take that photo, put the metadata on it, upload it to our website, then from our website, put it anywhere we want, and we like good photos, when they steal the photos, and we encourage it, they're advertising for you. So I have hundreds and hundreds of photos that people steal and use on all their other websites, they're advertising for me, I don't even care. So in the advertising game, when, when, when you see somebody dressed proper, and they're in a nice suit and tie, and the girls wearing a nice gown, and the shoes with the red bottoms, they're, they're, they're dressed to kill. That's marketing. Our website is marketing. How are you going to attract more business for 2018? You know, what did you do last year? How much really changed last year from the year before? If you want reasons, I said, you know what, you need to get somebody else. You want results? You sit down, get my number, come up with a plan for you, and you tell me where you want to work. If you want to work the whole country, that's going to be expensive because now you have to take out every local stage guy across the country and beat them. You want to work in a local market, 100 mile reach and radius, 200 miles, whatever it is, we'll, we'll target it. We took on a client and he wanted to target surgeries. I know surgery has nothing to do with us, but as far as the advertising goes, he had a very big budget. After three months, he wouldn't talk to us no more. He wanted two surgeries a week. He was getting seven. He had to work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. He used to take the weekends off with his family. Now he don't. You can't can't own the number one position if you can't handle the number one position. I have one negative review here in Florida from a girl I never met, I never did a business, never did a quote, and she just put one star. But she didn't say anything underneath, so we know where it came from. I won't mention her name's Jamie from Sidram. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not, I was actually laughing. I could call Google up and get it taken off. It doesn't matter to me. I, a review is not important. In the stage world, if you have 100 reviews, you're an important, you're an important entity. But if you don't have the power behind you to, to support the volume, if you're going to advertise, the first step you do is before you advertise, build a footprint. A footprint is putting your name, product, service, all, everything you have to offer all over the internet. You start with the major, major websites, Yahoo thing, Google, Baodao from China, India. Then you go to the local listings, Manta Merchant Circle all around. Then you go to the social containers. Then you, you saturate the photo containers. You guys remember Photo Bucket? There's companies out there, they're called free hosting sites. They allow you to, they allow you to post pictures in their site for free. So we put 50 or 100 pictures and every one of, let's say, 40 free hosting containers, that's 4,000 images. Now that 4,000 Im images are coming from 40 different places. And those 40 different places are gonna show what you have. Now the bots go out and say, oh, this guy got 40 pictures here, oh what? And he's got 40 pictures here, and 40 pictures here, and 40 pictures here, or 100, whatever it is. You're, you're occupying real estate in the name in your territory. The more real estate you occupy, the higher you're gonna rent. This year, 
I'm going to go all out. I'm going to completely saturate the whole U.S. My goal is to be number one across America and have a team of people taking the falls and feeding them to the, to the network partners. Why? It's just something I want to do. Somebody challenged me once, and I made a name, Sugar Packet, and when it came up, it was my face. You know, these are some of the, Google, Google is a robot. Google is just robots, and all it does is it's a, an electronic file cabinet that collects data. If you have images, every show you do, take a picture. Your guys are going there, just sit in front of the center of the stage, snap a picture. It doesn't matter what's in the picture. It matters because the phone has an ID, has a GPS location, and has a, a state, a county, a town, all that information is in that image. But when you bring that image to us, and we add 100 pages more behind it, you upload it to your website, from your website, it's gonna go to 40 different containers, that's how you make power. You wanna associate yourself with things bigger than you. So right. if you have an act, Luke Byron, and he was on your Apex stage, when they type in Luke Byron, and then they see this, and then they click on that link, now you got in traffic for something that Luke Byron got. But now that's pushing you up in the rankings. That's, the, go ahead. Something I've started doing is, normally if you have an ad that Luke Byron, Luke Byron might not want to talk or whatever, but somebody on a fan or rodeo or whatever will, so I go up and ask them, I was like, can you give me a rep, uh, how do you think my stage will stage? And I, give, I have a little note card to give them. And sometimes they're drunk and they're really funny, but um, they'll come here and make a video because they're like the scum of their group. But I can hashtag all their people's lives. Yeah. And it's a video. Okay, so. I know a lot of women in marketing, their SEO or their social gurus, which I really can't stand none of them, and I say it just like that. They put like 44,000 hashtags on one picture. You saturated and ruined the purpose. You want a hashtag, two to three tops. An image has value. You know, people don't realize it. If, if Google, Google is just an electronic file cabinet, Yahoo and Bing. All they do is they put you in a place, you put in a URL, it takes you to the URL, and everything in between there is information and whatnot. How do you know if a hashtag is real? How do you know if a hashtag is real? Yeah. Search it. I mean, but I, I'm, I, I got lots of stuff to do. I mean, I can't be, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but well, what's the purpose of you putting a hashtag? Because a hashtag is just a container. So okay. if you put hashtag Mobile Stage Conference Florida, there might be one picture in there. But if nobody's going there to look for it, what's the point of putting it there? Thank you. So when you have a whole hundred group, like everybody at the festival is now, oh, well, I want to know where the pictures are going to be. Oh, they're hashtag mobile stage conference. Oh, so you go to hashtag mobile stage conference, and everybody's pictures that they took, they hashtag the same hashtag, and now they all end up in that one container. I got it now. Thank you. Social. Uh, how many? Alex is like reverse and social engineered social containers, many of them. How many? Uh, I run, I run over 100 Instagram accounts. I have 250 Facebook pages. I started a new one called Steam It, where you actually get paid to post. So now I'm holding, I've, I've held back about 40 terabytes, and now I'm going to start leaking it into the uh, the new social media, and I'm going to start getting paid. Some of these guys are making $6,000 a post. So you guys have access to behind the scenes stuff and things that people would love to see. Guess what? Why not get paid for that too? Yeah, a picture doesn't have to be perfect either. A picture of a generator, a picture of a little girl sitting in the grass with a mom. You know, these pictures have value because it's how we tag it. When you send us pictures, you have to tell me the place, the location, and the date. And if you could give me the zip code of where you is, where, where it is, and then tell me what other zip codes you want to target. If you hit one of my images, there's probably... 500 different zip codes associated to that picture. So the next picture, I do the main zip code that I want to target and another 500 different ones. So then I'll do the next picture with the same zip code I want to target first with another 500 zip codes. People say 500 zip codes, oh my God, that must take forever. You know how many zip codes are in America? We did something for Dave Girardi. Is Dave here, is he still here? Uh, all right, so last year we did a website for him and we started doing uh, uh, Footprint. Uh, yesterday I was looking through the things and he ranked in, in Arizona uh, number five. 
He didn't exist in Arizona. He was paying Google ads. He ranked number five. And, you know, I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, I wanted to tell him, and I just forgot. Look, your, your website is your representation of you, your services, your product, and your staff. Uh, to have T-shirts printed up, it doesn't cost a lot of money. This year, this year when I'm going to do jobs with outsiders, I'm going to forward what size are the guys. I'm going to have all the sizes. I'm going to forward T-shirts. So when we're doing an event together and I book the event, you're still helping me grow. And my whole job is to give you jobs. I don't, I don't own a stage, so I can't take the job away from you. you know, I'll How many people take a picture of the stage when you set it up? What do you do with that picture? They don't even send it to me. It's a lie. I've been waiting for pictures. Nobody wants to give it because they're afraid I'm going to take over. You know what? Mike had a great idea about six years ago, maybe seven years ago. He goes, let's create a network. We only had one stage. So why don't we do a network? Well, we can get other people, put them in the network, and then we'll have two stages. Maybe even 10. This is many years ago. Now we have over 250 stages of contacts I have throughout America that I can pick up the phone, and they have my favorites and my non-favorites. My non-favorites are the ones who take more than two hours to return a number to me. So once I work with you a couple times, I know your numbers. I don't even, I just call up. You got a stage available? Great, let me try to book it. Today I apologize to, to Nate because I didn't come here first with the insurance. Because I was upstairs, I sent out a quote that Mike gave me. Mike sent me a lead, it's out of his territory. He's not gonna do it. He gave me a lead, see if he can work it. And uh, the, I sent out a lead and the guy came back to me and he says, can you send me some pictures of the stage? I said, oh man, I gotta get down there. And it's almost nine o'clock, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Business is business. I sat down, I turned on my computer, I took out a couple of pictures of what they wanted, and I sent it to the guy. Do you know I answered his quote within five minutes of receiving it? And I gave him a full blown estimate, all typed out through QuickBooks. If you guys don't use QuickBooks, and you want a nice little accounting program, I'll be more than happy to share that with you. It's very simple. I can do a contract talking to you sitting right here. That's how simple it is. The downside of it is you have to take the time to put in Apex, 3224, Apex, 2420, Apex, 20 by 16. And you put it in there and you have a base price or no price. And then you put in clues, a set of stairs, set of this, set of that. All I can say is the most powerful tool that I found that's, that's probably the most inexpensive that has long lasting effects. And then once a week or once a month, you add in one or two pictures or another five pictures, you'll have real estate. It's internet real estate. The more real estate you occupy, the wealthier you are in link juice. The more link juice you have, the higher you rank. Cut and dry. Press releases, you should do at least two press releases a year. Call me up, we'll set one up, we'll get a, profession, a professional writer. A reader that respects a writer. We're not writers, especially me. I'm the most abrasive human being you can meet. And if you ever drank with me, which is a very rare occasion, it could be pretty funny. There is no ratings when I drink, none. We ordered pizza the other night at two o'clock in the morning after doing massive tequila shots. And I was only there for a little bit because there's no way you can have me drink in a long time. The pizza is here, so if anybody's hungry, we're letting the children and everybody get it first. Where is the pizza? I smell it. Oh, I see it right there. Uh, <laughs> Before we end, I just wanted to show you a quick, uh, a little video of some of the stuff that we did shoot over the last year. Um, this was a little collaboration. I don't know. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we did the Today Show almost everyone, the Dale Earnhardt Jr. tour with Walmart <laughs> and the Daytona 500. So to be able to put a recap for the, the people who want to hire you, they kind of they want to see like the story behind the show. They want to know what are you doing? Okay, yeah, you got a stage here, but what's the atmosphere? What's the things going on around it? And you, you can share that story by capturing little moments in time. This is the thing we did for the the Dupont Registry, where they had a, a stage set up inside an airport hangar. We did the Hard Rock for the for the ticket holders. So they put the stage and they had to put the plywood down and drive it in and then they have this whole thing but how many people get to see this part if they're sitting there trying i, I want to book a stage and i never did this before you want to be able to show what an edm festival might look like so the color runs you got all these different events that happen throughout the year and, and you guys can really create really cool content that makes people want to 
Juju. Engagement. Engagement. That's because I only want to do the best, coolest events ever. At boring events? You know what I like most about boring events? I got paid. I'm going to tell you a story. I don't know if it was Alex. And Mike put us into the story. We were doing Gay Pride in uh, Queens. We did. We already set up two stages. We're waiting for the, sh for the show to end so we can go wherever it is we're going to go next. And we're sitting in the back of the pickup truck. Is it you? I don't know who it was. Anyway, somebody's sitting next to me, and we had uh, uh, almost nine feet tall transvestites with 36 inch heels. Lip sync, Ralph sinking, and it was Ralph. Was it you, Ralph? He goes, What the hell are we doing with this kind of show? I said, Ralph, if it wasn't for them entertainers, we wouldn't be here. So I don't care what you put on the stage. We had people hanging from the, from the nippies and stuff on chains in the roof, getting tattooed upside down. Doesn't matter. You know what matters? The stage went to work. One of your workers went to work, and at the end of the day, you brought a check home to your families. That's the only thing that matters. So what goes on the stage? Irrelevant. And another video that we put together for the Olympics, the New York Winter Olympics, we put a, a show together, and we did the whole install video. So we created a, a video of the guys getting there on Halloween, and you have all these freak shows walking by, they block off the streets and we had to build a stage in like 10 hours and have the whole footprint ready and then in the morning they had the people coming in. But sometimes the clients would like to see what it looks like and, and when you want to justify why the price is what it is. Well look, I got nine guys building this, another three guys doing lights, two more guys doing audio over here, another guy setting this up. And that's just... just so what kind of camera did you film this with? One. I know one, but like one. An expensive phone or one I, I, camera. I use a 5D Mark IV. I mean, like we're all not gonna go by. Oh, the time hot camera. That's very expensive. I, I found a through Tito. It's this this Italian brand called Bruno, and they're like under 300 bucks. They take four AA batteries and uh, 32 gig card. I set one up in our room on the 12th floor overlooking here and that's how I got the, the video wall time lapse of the event getting set up. Video, videos right now represent 72% of the traffic on the internet. How many people did you know that YouTube is a search engine now? And there's more people that are going to look on YouTube how to do this. What does this look like? Oh yeah, how to's are good. There's a new video coming out, it's called How to Rent the Stage. Yeah, I'm doing it. You know why? Because a lot of people don't know. You can tell when you have a, a tire kicker, a guy that has no clue, and a pro on the phone. But when you have a quick quote form and it's filled out fully, you know you're dealing with somebody real. They gave you the information. And it's up to you to turn that around as soon as possible. My goal is two hours or less. They have to have it done in their hand. And I found that right now I'm closing about 80% of the deals. I'm a little on the soft side. Remember, I don't have an income. I have to create my own income. You know, I don't have to say, oh, I'm gonna put my stage out and I made three grand today. You know, out of the three grand, if I see 200 bucks, I'm pretty happy that. So I have to do a lot of those 200s. And the dead of winter up in the Northeast, nobody playing the drums, nobody's strumming a guitar. That's why we come to Florida and fight with all the locals to get $100 for the stage instead of 300. All right, so now, Doug is happy. <laughs> because he has more customers, he has more income, and Invisible Rhino manages his entire digital reputation. Digital reputation, that's what, this whole conversation we've been having, I don't know if we're here now because we started late, due to some other people. Digital reputation, we, if you have negative stuff about your company, I'll help you get it off. It'll never go away, but what we can do is push it so far down that it's not seen with a human. There's a human and then there's a robot. Our whole world is robot world. You see the results, but most of what we see, you know what I mean? Most of what we see is, oh, we see a picture, we see an image, we see this. The robots see content. Metadata, if there's no metadata associated to the content you're putting out there, then it's irrelevant. It, does, it, has, but, it has no purpose. But the content has to be quality. You can trick the robots all day long, but if it gets to the top and it's an ugly picture of a stage and it's dark or whatever, then you lost the customer that you were trying to 
the track in the first place. What what percentage would you say the customers who are running the stage have never ridden the stage? I, I just I would probably be like one of my difficulties is my head on. They already have a stage guy. So they're not gonna let local stage. Somebody said that to me yesterday. We always have to teach them. I don't know if it was Tom. I don't think it was Tom. Was it you, Tom, that said we always have to teach them? And I says, if I have to teach them, I'm one of his customers. Because I have to convince them to get the right stage. Then I got to convince them to get the right system. Then I got to convince them to give me a deposit. Right, right, right. Then I got to convince them to pay me. I'm not in the convincing business. So what percentage? I would say if you put in Google ads that are not done by a professional, professional, you're going to get a lot of cracker leads where people are just calling tire kickers. A lot of people that are renting a stage that don't know about a stage, it happened to be uh, five weeks ago, the client was North Face, you know the people who make North Face? A young person was on the other end of the phone and had absolutely zero clue. But they knew what they wanted and I, and I went back and forth a couple times, I got him a quote right away and uh, Somebody else called me and says, yeah, I'm the event so-and-so coordinator. And then I says, uh, the show is in seven days. I still don't have a deposit. This is going on now for like maybe 10 days. It was 10 days before. <clears throat> then I get a call. Hi, I'm the person who writes the checks. This is the one I want to talk to. Uh, it was an uh, almost $20,000 job for... I think this stage, an XXL, this stage right here, 20,000, audio, banners, some other stuff. And you know what? It was a la It was just before the holidays, I think in uh, the end of November, just before I went to surgery. They, the first person didn't know, but I didn't throw blow them away. I left them there, you know what I mean? I took the time, I'll take the time. If the person doesn't know, I'll take the time and do it. But now as soon as April, May, when May starts, to October to August, I'm on the phone 18 hours a day because I'm not just doing one coast; I'm doing two coasts. And last year I did uh, 18 shows in California, just California. And I just had started, you know what I mean? I said, you know what? We went out there to work with some uh, uh, internet people, marketeers, well, so, social influencers. Social influencers—that's the correct name. And I was out there for 11 months. I said, you know what? I'm going to build a footprint in California. And I just started doing my pictures, my thing, and now, now I'm number one in California. And the guy, who is number one in California, that I pushed him down four positions, takes the time, Cleek, Mike, where is he? Is he here? Cleek calls me up, yo, how many stages you got here? So how, how many you got? He goes, I got eight. I said, I got eight plus another eight. <laughs> he didn't understand. He didn't understand it. You know what? I, I've seen Skinny, he did, we did uh, the, uh, the Air Force, Air Force, right? We did uh, three shows, we had the chance for nine, somewhere along the communication lines. We, the sec we did three, and then we did another three, but the next three was $600 more the, per show than the previous three, and then they kind of said, no. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, we did three shows. And uh, I love getting, you know, if you're number one on the, on, on the page, you're gonna get calls. Everybody here is from a different place. Everybody here is from a different place. Each one of your local places, you should be number one. If you're not number one, come and sit down with me, spend two, three minutes, let's swap numbers, and I'll tell you where, where, where you are. I'm gonna do a search on you right next to you and tell you where you exist or where you don't exist. And what we also do is an audit of the competition on that page. So we look at how many backlinks they have, is how many people are referring you to that site, how many um, clicks are you getting a day? Um, all this information is important because if you want to beat them, you have to know where the other nine people exist. You know, I really appreciate you guys like sticking around here while the pizza is getting warmer. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Now is the time. Take the time. I'll sit here. You guys can eat pizza. You want to come back? Not a problem. Yeah. My question to you is, what's your business model? I want to. I want to hire you to help me grow my business. Am I hiring you to do a website for me, to support my website, to just get leads for me? I don't really understand what you're doing. Where, where, where are you located? I'm in Michigan. Michigan. There's not a lot of guys in Michigan, so you're going to own that market. Okay. Uh, a website, um, 
Yeah. For what you did, what do you do? We have a stage and some audio? Yeah. Uh, like 1800 bucks. Footprint, $6,000. Over three months, $2,000 a month. Uh, what does a footprint do? Do you own 500 images or 400 images, pictures? You have to give us those images. So 400 images times 100 to 200 pages per image. Right. Spread out through all those containers. What you're doing, in essence, if I, in the business model, like in a business, I don't even want to call it that because I don't want to do this like with the hobby. This is just a hobby. So if I was to call it a business model, I would say is uh, you are on the fifth page of Google. When I start, by the way, when I started and I owned my name for two years, my website for two years, I was on page 56 and in three months I got on page one and I never came off. How many people own their domain name? How many years did you buy it for? How many years did you buy it for? No, you do the max. How many people rent a warehouse space? Do you rent by one month at a time or do you do five, ten years? All right, do it, do it, do it, do it. All right watch this. If you rent your year, one year or two year by two year, Google sees you as a fly by night. You need to have your name the maximum every year. Even ten though you ten, 10 years at the max. You buy your name for 10 years. And then every year you just add that extra year to let them know that you're not playing. Because that shows credibility and you're not going anywhere. Mobile stage. Me and Mike fought more about mobile stage. It, it, it was just, you know, just a free thing. How, how, you want to rank in your place? I'll tell you exactly what you're going to spend. It's not cheap. But what, I can't tell you your footprint what it's going to cost because I don't know who your competition is. So we add up what all the competition has and then we take everything they have and add 10% to it. And now you'll get underneath the guy in the first place or maybe the first place. But if you can't handle the first place, I'm going to tell you, you can't be there. You're going to stay third. Right. Or you're going to stay second. Right. Because what happens, and Mike will tell you, there's times we're in the office that the phones ring so bad. Where's Adriana? Adriana. Adriana, that girl, will take four or five calls in a 10 minute period and go completely, completely, you know, over, overwhelmed with what happens. And sometimes during the busy season, we lose, we lose a lot of deals because we're working on this one and all of a sudden another one comes in and you didn't finish final up with it. It's a lot of work to be on the top, I'll tell you right now. I don't, I don't really leave my computer and when I do, I'm like shaking. Listen, there's pizza outside in the back. Uh, we're going to be sitting here, you want to grab some slices, take your time. And I'm going to be doing some testimonial videos uh, of the conference, so come and 